Welcome to the Hamumu Halloween Home Horror Hoedown, the podcast where we watch scary movies so you don't have to. From award-winning to completely unknown, we take them all way too seriously. I'm your host, Mike Hommel. And I'm your host, Solange Hommel. Now warning, we use a ghoulish number of spoilers, so watch the movies first. Second warning, we don't know anything about anything, so don't take us seriously as we take these movies seriously. This week, we watched a movie about vegetarians. Yes, but it was French. (laughs) It was French. It was very French in a lot of ways. Yes, it was. But I think what you're referring to primarily is that it was... In French. It was in French, but also there were lots of butts. There were a lot of butts. Yeah. Just a heads up, there is mention of rape and sexual assault and violent sexual acts in this podcast. It's very French. Have you ever attended veterinary school? I have not. I'm really curious because this movie, Raw from 2016, does not present it in a way that makes it seem great. No. So I've always had this idea, probably because of all of the like 80s movies, that in America, at least, college sororities and fraternities do all this like crazy hazing things Mm -hmm. and like that that's a thing, but that it's like a thing that's separate. It's it's not the school part of it. It's the, (laughs) you know extracurricular yeah, stuff it's a social on top thing. of yeah apparently in france at least in the france that exists in this movie <laughs> when you go to this particular veterinary school the first week that you're there you are just being straight up tortured by everyone else yeah and there are no grown ups around no there really aren't it's it's like boot camp but there's no drill sergeants it's just the other soldiers abusing you well it's like boot camp if like all the senior the upperclassmen are Uh the people running the boot camp and they're just torturing the incoming freshmen yeah and literally there are like three or four grown-ups i mean these college students are grown-ups of a sort but three or four people running the school yes there's there's the the nurse and there's a couple of teachers and like that's it Otherwise, I mean, it's that just... we see, yeah. But where are they? <laughs> I don't know. Like, the things we are going to talk about in regards to this movie, where were the adults? Where were the police? Where were the paramedics? And the, like, there should have been so many people mm-hmm. taking charge of these out of control young yeah. adults. I mean, the whole thing was exactly a frat. Like, you know, the. The incoming freshmen are being hazed and they're put through these horrible things. And, you know, they throw their beds, their mattresses out the window and they have to go get them off the ground and bring them back into their room. A week later. A week later. But it's not a frat. It's the entire school. Yeah. And it just, the whole thing doesn't work for me. I mean, maybe it's like based on something real, but... The idea that vet school is the place where you'd see that just doesn't fit. Like, I mean, veterinarians, like, that's that's the nice people. These students, like, they marched around, like, with body marching tunes that (laughs) they walked in step to. And they were naked all the time. (laughs) They drank so much alcohol. And, And all of these parties were happening in, like, weird basement dungeon areas and stuff. And... It just the whole thing was was mind boggling, and not only was it mind boggling, but down in one of the weird basement dungeon areas, there's a hallway where there's the day one photo of each incoming class, yeah. which they have the super adorable and quaint tradition of it's all about tradition dumping pig's blood on them from the roof of the building, like all of the pictures are them in their medical whites covered in blood which they then i mean they clearly laundered them but they were still stained with blood for the rest of the the year and for the whole first day like they get covered with blood and then they're just 
walking around, going to all of their classes, taking tests on the first day of school yes, for some reason. Of course. In blood covered outfits with like their hair all matted and like blood all over their faces and stuff. Yeah, that like what that just felt is going on? so sticky to me. I did not like right? it. Right? It was it was bizarre. But anyway, there's this hallway where they have rows and rows, like they just show all of these day one photos going back to oh look, here's mom and dad. Mom and dad of the two sisters who are the main characters of this movie who we yeah. haven't even started to talk about because <laughs> the very concept of the location of this film is so mind-boggling. It runs in the family, the veterinary process. That's not the only thing. It's not, as we discover. So, okay, let's back up a little bit and talk about the people in this movie. Our star is Justine, who is, she looks like she's 12, and she is starting in veterinary school as a freshman. She's going in. But her sister's already there. Yeah, she's like junior, senior. I don't know. She was a couple years ahead of her. Yeah. And there are very minor hints. Like Justine's dad calls her brainiac when he when they drop her off. And like she finishes the day one test. I don't know what they're testing them on day one. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know. She finishes the test like way ahead of everyone else and... Like her roommate, who is a guy, wants to cheat off of her test and she won't let him and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Like there are these vague hints that she's way smarter than everybody else. And that, in fact, there's a rant by one of the teachers at one point <laughs> yeah. when he's accusing her of cheating. And he's like, you shouldn't even be here. Other people chose not to become veterinarians because they were so intimidated by how smart you are. And you are costing the industry good vets because they wouldn't even try to compete with yeah. you. And I'm like, what well, on and, earth? And he didn't mean her personally. He just has it out for smart people. He hates them. Apparently. But he was definitely talking <laughs> yeah. also about her. He's yeah, like, you but, I mean, shouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah. It was bizarre. So apparently, like, she's way smarter than everybody else. And then they've all been vegetarians. As we learn in the opening scene where her mom goes, like, all Karen on some cafeteria worker yeah. over a stray meatball in the mashed potatoes. Yes, which she put in her mouth whole without knowing it was there. Yeah, somehow didn't notice it was there, but was so grossed out that it had been in her mouth. Yes. I can't believe they didn't call this movie The Vegetarian Veterinarian. It would have been <laughs> so either. good. That would have been awesome. So we have all four of them are supposedly like adamant, fervent vegetarians. Seemingly, although when she gets into the college, she discovers that her sister Alex claims not to be a vegetarian. No. And in fact, this comes up during one of the hazing rituals, which was, you have to eat a chunk of raw rabbit kidney. Mm-hmm. And Justine was like, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. Just ask my sister. And her sister was like, you're making me look bad. You're embarrassing me put it in your mouth, and like shoved it in her face. Yeah, it was a rough relationship. Her sister was not nice to her. No. Well, eating rabbit kidneys when you're a vegetarian is very bad. Not ethically. I mean, it is ethically inappropriate, but it is very bad for you as it causes intense rashes that peel off and are horrible. Oh, yeah. Her skin like bubbled and peeled and was super itchy. Mm hmm. That's nothing compared to what happened to her brain. Yes. Her brain decided it wanted meat all the time. And like, not like, oh, mm, fried chicken smells good. Or, you know, I like my steak medium well. No, she's like going in the refrigerator at, in the middle of the night and like eating chicken breast raw. Yeah, she did that. That was a bad scene. Not as bad as many other scenes. I mean, honestly, that was probably the least <laughs> bothersome thing that she ate in the whole movie. Yeah, because it's almost... I mean, this spoily gets into, you know, the secrets we learn, but it's almost a werewolf movie in that mm. she learns that there's this family curse that has been passed down to her and she learns that her sister has the same thing, 
where they have a craving to eat human flesh. Wait, can I ask a question? Did she learn that early on in the movie, or is that something that we don't learn until much later? No, later. Okay, okay. That's No, it's fine. I just thought maybe I had missed something, because it was all in French, and so if I looked away and didn't catch a subtitle, (laughs) I might have missed a piece of information. No, that's that's the revelations that come out throughout the movie. So, So she is like craving raw meat, and... Her sister finds out about this when the sister, Alex, accidentally cuts off her own middle finger with a pair of scissors, which I'm going to tell you, like, that is one of those intrusive thoughts that happens in my head. Yeah. Anytime I think about a pair of scissors, like, I have to actively, consciously n- not picture myself cutting my own fingers off. Yeah. She cuts off her middle finger. And her sister... Instead of helping her... Well, she goes in the fridge to look for ice to put the finger on, but she doesn't find any. No. And then just gets distracted by the smell of Uh delicious middle finger goodness. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, noms on that thing like it's a baby corn. Yeah. And that was a great scene. That was delightful. But also, (laughs) I mean, it's not... It's not so weird that she just got distracted because throughout the movie, from then on, Mm -hmm. we kind of see that it is an absolute compulsion Mm -hmm. that she physically has to, like, push herself away from and usually can't Mm -hmm. even do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she likes to eat people. Yeah, she's just into it. And so then they don't tell anybody. They pretend the dog ate the finger. Mm Mm-hmm. Which then causes the dog to be put down because once a dog has tasted human flesh and if it likes it, it'll go for more. Theme. Yeah. I mean, we saw that play out. <laughs> so anyway, they blame it on the dog. and But from that point on, there's like this tension between the sisters because there's always this like, but you ate my finger. <laughs> Peace like between them. Fair. Which then is kind of balanced out later. When they're having a fight, like brawling fight, and Alex bites a chunk of uh, Justine's cheek off. Yeah, like you do sometimes. And a gaping hole in her face. Yeah. Justine does get her back a bit by, I think, biting her arm or something. Just nothing nearly as bad. I mean, right. At that point, they're just like biting each other. and and, Yeah. And they're they're rabid dogs. Right? They are doing this in like the commons area out on the front lawn of their school. And there are people standing all around watching this happen. And everyone is upset by it. (laughs) Yeah, they are. But nobody does anything about it. No, it's none of their business. And and again, like, there's no police. There's no, Mm -hmm. nothing happens. Like, they're just allowed to do this. And then eventually, I don't know, they stop and they go back to their dorm room. Yeah, I guess so. And they kind of wrap their wounds up a little bit. The police and paramedics do get involved when we learn when Alex kind of tries to teach Justine how to hunt, although without actually telling Mm -hmm. her that's what she's doing, Mm -hmm. because clearly she's lived with this craving a while. And this is her technique, everybody. Give it a try. Don't give it a try. Don't give it a try. Our lawyers say that we cannot (laughs) tell you to give this a try. Don't give it a try. (laughs) She hunkers down on the side of the road out of sight and when a car comes by she jumps out in front of it so that it swerves and hits a tree and crashes and i guess airbags are not great in france because the people in the car end up dead and she eats them or or takes a nibble off of them this isn't the first time that this happens because early early on like almost in a prologue sort of yeah it's the start of the movie we see someone jump out in front of a car a car have an accident And then that person goes to the front, you know, like the driver door. We're like, what is going on? What could this mean? And then later, Justine and Adrian, her gay roommate, roommate, and yes, that is relevant to the story. (laughs) They decide to go to like a gas station to get some shawarma. shawarma. Yeah. Which doesn't feel like where I would get shawarma from, but maybe that was the closest option. So they're driving to this gas station by bus. They start in the day and they end in the night. So I don't know how far away this shawarma was. (laughs) Yeah, It's the best in town (laughs) is why they had to go so far to the gas station. But on the way, they pass like a bunch of emergency vehicles 
by a car that has driven straight into a tree and she sees like the body and she's all like, mm, that looks tasty. Uh-huh. So this is like the third time, which tells us this is happening regularly. Yeah. And over and over and over don't again. don't seem to have a solution for it. No, because I don't think there are any grown-ups in France. That's what's going on. Yes. France just, is run by frat boys. It's just frat boys and girls. Like it was a co-ed f- yeah. fraternity sorority thing. The, I mean, they had co-ed dorms. Yeah. Everybody's running around naked all the time. <laughs> True. It was, yeah, like the world that these girls lived in was so bizarre. However, we can talk all day about eating human flesh, as we usually do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But there's a scene before she really gets into eating human flesh where Justine is being, I believe it's when... The professor is ranting about smart people at her, Mm. where Justine is chewing on her hair. (gasps) Oh, my God. Okay, here's the thing. I hated that so much that I literally had blocked it from my mind, Mm -hmm. and I didn't even remember it happened until you said that. Yeah. It seemed like, to me, that she was just chewing on the end of her hair, and that's fine. Mm Mm-hmm. It's probably not that clean, but still. It's not really that fine, but okay. (laughs) She's just chewing on it. But apparently she was ripping some off and swallowing it. But how much was she swallowing? I don't know. Like the amount of hair that she pulled out of her own throat in that scene. Delightful scene. Which makes me want to gag right now, even just thinking about Mm -hmm. it. Was roughly equivalent to about half the hair on her head. Yeah. So I don't know how she still had hair on her head and then was doing that. That was such a weird scene, and also the worst thing I've ever seen, <laughs> that it made me feel like like it was surreal. It yes. was not really happening, like it was a nightmare, or it was, I don't know, symbolic in some way. Like, what was happening? I mean, I think you're you're hitting on what this movie is. And like we've been talking, we've been kind of complaining about how unrealistic the whole thing was. It was a surreal movie. And I think that's like part of me wants to say that's like some of the Frenchness of it, right? Like there was was a lot of Frenchness. It was just completely unrealistic and absurd in its excess of everything that was going on. Yeah, especially the way people reacted to things and stuff. It was not the way people would react they right. kind of glossed over everything and right just i mean and it was it. and i i don't want to say that like i'm not trying to suggest that it was poorly done i think this was this is a style it was yes. deep into that style and like that was the point it was speaking to the absurdity of various things of life there are these various like rants that people go on that seem very disjointed and separate from what's going on in the movie where there's like a kid in the dining hall who goes off about AIDS and monkeys and <laughs> right and they're like we don't want to talk about this he's like no it's a perfectly it's, reasonable question right it, like he he goes on this rant about this stuff and then at one point Justine's dad is talking to her like outside the hospital and basically he goes he he says don't don't have girls don't have a daughter having two girls at once is too hard yeah everybody keeps making these like dramatic pronouncements of things that are so extreme like Justine at one point in the whole AIDS monkey <laughs> rape conversation is making the point that animals have feelings yeah but makes that point by basically telling everybody that sexually assaulting monkeys and sexually assaulting human women is equivalent. Yeah, that was her alienating everyone simultaneously. Yes. Like, and I get her point and I agree with her point. And then I'm like, that's not the way to get that across. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because she was like, she was fighting with the boys who were talking about monkeys being raped. And these girls sitting nearby were like, wait a minute, you're calling us monkeys, basically. Yeah. So it was, it was, nobody was happy. No. And there were all of these moments. There's a scene where they're at the gas station or the truck stop or convenience store or whatever it was, where a trucker comes over and they're like, there's a whole thing about truckers being alcoholics or something. Yeah, I guess so. Like everything was so intense Mm -hmm. and like. No, that's not what are you why are you saying that? <laughs> yeah. 
It was it was very strange. That was a very threatening scene. Yes. Interesting. And like he had his hand all over Adrian's face and like it was one of those scenes and there were many of these in the movie where it was like very aggressively sexually suggestive. And I mean, there was a lot of not sexual violence, but violent sexuality. Yeah. If the difference is like, I guess consent is the difference there. So there was a lot of that in the movie, but this was just like suggestive that never really went anywhere, but it was just like, this is about to take a really weird, unpleasant turn. And then it didn't, Yeah. which was surprising because most of the time (laughs) it totally went into whatever weird, unpleasant turn Uh you were expecting. One of the weird things being said in this movie that I don't understand, and maybe you can explain to me. Okay. Alex is coming out of the hospital after having her finger bandaged up, her lack of finger bandaged up. Yeah. And, you know, she's hurt, and they, they're talking about how, like, you know, well, there's no physical therapy for this because it's missing, so it's not going to get any better. And a couple other things, they're like, you know, there's nothing to do, just go home. And her mom is, you know, arguing with the hospital people, saying, you know, oh, we can't just leave her like this. And she says, she can't eat. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> You could definitely eat with nine fingers. That's fine. I mean, it's even... Not that I consider any of my fingers expendable, but like if if I can't use my middle finger to hold a fork or a pen or something, I think I could still hold a fork or a pen. Like that's probably one of the easier ones to function without. Yeah. I don't know. It it was it was definitely a meant. bizarre thing. The mom was like super weirdly helicopter Karen parenting. Yeah. She was of a very unpleasant family, the most uh, unpleasant <laughs> of all of them, I think. Yeah. So after all this madness and people being chewed on a lot, we come down to the point where Justine's roommate has now been eaten by Alex. And yeah, she wakes up. Not only is she like in love with this guy, this roommate who is clearly gay, has said it repeatedly that he's gay, has shouted it in a quiet room full of people studying. Yes, that happened. She's she's in love with him, but she also like whenever she sees him, she looks at him the way Tom looks at Jerry when he's chasing him around and like is picturing him as like a little roast floating in the air <laughs> or a chicken drumstick running across the room. Yeah. Like definitely. she's just ready to eat this guy and that's what she's mad about and then she wakes up <laughs> next to him because i don't know they, they i think they shared a bed because they put alex in her bed oh because sure. they were all in the same room yeah anyway she wakes up and finds out that he is dead and has definitely been nommed on and she like has all this guilt although she also shouts at his remains why didn't you fight back which feels like the ultimate well victim blaming no i mean yes but she was saying that because she thought she had eaten him during her drunken stupor no i know that's she, what i'm saying but she was like why you know why did you let me do this kind of i i get I, it yeah. but also it's no like, no it's i think we're thing. both right yeah let's both be right i think we're both right but also he's dead so she won i guess but she didn't eat her best buddy and no. and heartthrob. Instead, her sister stabbed him in the back with a ski pole and then ate his leg. Yeah. And then, like, got catatonic just sitting there playing a video game. She was, like, broken. Yeah. And I, I think that's part of it. Like, they're not right in the head, no. these, these cannibals. Yeah. I mean, I sort of think cannibalism does that. Like, it kind of messes with your brain. I have heard that there's a risk of encephalitis when you eat humans. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where I heard that. It was like 40 years ago. So I was (laughs) five years old or so. (laughs) When you were first exploring the world of cannibalism. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, you shouldn't do it. Don't do it. No. No, I think it's a bad idea. So, yeah, then... The end result of all of this is that Alex goes to jail. Right. Justine, nothing. The only punishment that happens to Justine is that she has to go live with her parents again. And that is punishment enough. It might be worse than going to jail. Yeah. And she does that, and her mom goes to bed, and her dad sits and has a chat with her. After telling her, 
an 18 year old, at least I would guess woman, don't get up from the table until you have cleaned your plate. (laughs) That's right. What? Of vegetables. She was not eating people at this time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's so messed up. And then her dad decides to have a little quiet word with his daughter and is like, so, you know, turns out your mom's got this going on too and always has. And what we've worked out is that she tears bits off of me and eats them. See? Yeah, and his chest is just like a mass of scars and Uh-huh. So that's huh? that's where we end up with this movie at the end. So that did help me a little bit because at one point I had written down the question, why are these two the only two who have been affected? The whole school, the whole oh, yeah. freshman class was going through this hazing. They all had to eat the rabbit kidneys. Oh yeah, rabbit kidneys are fine. It's just that, you know, this is this it is the cannibal thing. Genetics. Which then makes me wonder, oh, I feel like I just figured something out. Okay. That's why the mom was so strict about vegetarianism. Yes. Because she knew that knew as this. soon as her kids tasted flesh for the first time, that that was it. They were going to want to eat everything. Because she heard the story about a dog. I mean, it's very much a werewolf movie. It's like, we know this curse that has afflicted our family for generations. We know how to manage it. But these... Kids both slipped loose, which is insane because they slipped loose by going to the same school their parents did and going through the same rituals that have been tradition at that school forever. Yeah. Maybe they should have said, hey, don't go to that school. Go be a lawyer. <laughs> right? Yeah. There were there were a series of bad choices made in terms of parenting these two girls. If they knew that meat would trigger this in them... Like, I feel like that's something that at some point, maybe not when they're tiny, but at some point, you don't just say, hey, so girls, we're vegetarians. (laughs) You say, you are deathly allergic to meat. Yes. And then eventually, that's when you're little, so you don't. And then eventually you're like, okay, we have to have the talk. And it's about how maybe when, when you feel a lot of like strong emotions, You don't bite the other person that you're around. You don't try to eat them. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. But Um, they never had that conversation. Yeah. That really, by the end of this movie, I was feeling so angry at the bad parenting here that, (laughs) Mm -hmm. that they let their daughters go through this. And even to the point where Alex went to jail and they still hadn't had a conversation with their other daughter about how this worked and Mm -hmm. the biting the finger off well it didn't get bit off it got cut off but yeah they kept it all secret when they needed to just be open about it which really i mean there are so many stories that we watch where we're like if you know if you guys would just talk about this i know you wouldn't be going through all of this which you know is kind of the point that is the point they have to go through it for us to enjoy their suffering and it was so enjoyable (laughs) So I guess I'm going to have to disagree with that last statement that you made about it being so enjoyable. <laughs> okay. Um, there may have been sarcasm in the statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I knew going in, I'm like, a, a movie called Raw about a vegetarian who goes to veterinary school. I'm like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of boxes of things I am not going to like happening yep. here. And I kind of picked it for that reason. Because we haven't watched a lot of like really edgy Yeah, messed up stuff. Yeah, we've we haven't done a lot of that in the last year, basically. Uh, I keep wanting to say season, but we're six months into this season now, so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So I kinda I did pick it intentionally. I knew I was gonna feel this way about this movie, and I definitely did. I did not enjoy any of the absurdity of it or the the surrealism of it. I didn't enjoy the very graphic nature of and violent nature of all of the different things that were happening. Like I can appreciate it for what it was. I think it was well done for what it was, but for me, this was not the movie for me. <laughs> so I'm going to say that, but then I'm going to give it a much higher score than, than you're probably expecting because what? for what it was, I think it was very well done. It was captivating. Like I was enthralled through the whole thing I didn't 
look at the screen for a lot of it. I mean, I guess I did because I had to read it, but it was nice that I was looking at the words and I didn't have to look at the pictures a lot. Uh-huh. Because I think it was it was very well done. I think the story was interesting. I think there were layers to it as we... I mean, obviously, it took me a minute to get to those layers. But I am going to give this movie four eyeball licks out of five. Wow. That's when I didn't look at the screen. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah I didn't like that. No, you don't like eyeball things. <laughs> no, I don't. Four out of five eyeball yeah, looks. Yeah, I mean, I do think... I think it was really well done. I think the acting was all good. I think there was a lot of, like... In terms of body horror, which I feel like this is what that was, right? Yeah, I think that counts. You know, like, surreal body horror. This this was a good movie for oh. that. I just don't like that. Yeah, I have a hard time. Like, I don't want to rate it low for their choice of subject matter or whatever unless it's just not okay i'm looking at you human centipede (laughs) but i think it was almost too subtly surreal like i didn't really think of it as a surreal sort of experience until we had our discussion today and i was just like why was everybody so weird (laughs) Well, I wonder how much of that is because we were watching subtitled. Yeah. Like, and I don't think the subtitles were great in terms of catching all the nuance of what was going on. Yeah. I wouldn't say that it was an enjoyable experience, Mm -mm. even though I did say that it was earlier. (laughs) But it was well crafted. And I feel like it did a good job of like, it wasn't just some nonsense about cannibalism. It had revelations Mm -hmm. and led to an ending that kind of put it all together, Mm -hmm. which is nice because we don't often get that in our movies. So it makes it so hard to rate because Mm -hmm. I don't like the hair. I didn't like Mm -hmm. the hair at all. The hair, the eyeballs, the biting. Mm -mm. Yeah. But I would give it three... And a half eyeball licks out of five. If that's what you want to see. If you like people grabbing raw chicken and chowing down on it, this is the movie for you. But if not, just enjoy our podcast. We watch the movie so you don't have to. Yeah. Fight the horror of a world gone mad. As the credits roll for each movie... I try to make some kind of connection and like make a little note for myself of what what political tip I'm going to connect to the movie, right? There's usually sure. something where I'm like, even just a topic or whatever. At the end of this movie, all I wrote down was, I have nothing. Like, I couldn't even think because this movie was so upsetting to my brain. <laughs> like, I, I had gone into like... I don't know, protective mode somehow. Yeah, I feel like maybe that's that means it was good. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think so. But in the course of us talking about it, especially at the end where we're talking about how the family secrets led to all of this happening mm-hmm. and that the people in charge who should have known better had all of these secrets that they didn't share and then they let all of this bad stuff happen and then they tried to like blame... Alex is the one who ends up in prison. Yeah. She did murder somebody, but still. Okay, she murdered several somebodies. She was crashing a lot of cars in the French countryside. (laughs) But still, like the parents, there was no accountability, except that, you know, finally their secret comes out at the end. And I'm just going to tie that to a level of schadenfreude that I have been experiencing this week as like Tucker Carlson gets fired from Fox (laughs) News And the representative in Tennessee is forced to resign because his history of sexually assaulting interns came out after he went after two other representatives simply for protesting gun violence. Mm. And then like today, the secrets haven't come out yet, but the Montana House of Representatives has decided that Representative Zoe Zephyr can no longer come to the floor to vote. She can only vote remotely because she had the audacity to be upset about transgender attacks legislatively um, because (laughs) she is transgender and these are her people and she is upset that, you know, their lives are at stake. 
and uh, how dare her. So now she's not even allowed to go to the floor anymore. Uh-huh. And um, that, that's objectively worse than the original. But the original thing they did to her was you are no longer allowed to speak. Yeah. Like literally you cannot speak. We and won't that's recognize you. messed up. We won't call on you. You're not allowed to speak. And she was like, that's not okay. And she Good. argued it. And then they kicked her off the floor entirely, which mm-hmm. even more not okay. Yeah. And what I am hoping is that like all of these other things that are slowly but surely happening is that we're going to suddenly start hearing a lot of interesting things about a lot of other Montana representatives. I think we will. And what kinds of secrets they've been hiding in their closets because I guarantee it's worse than wanting to speak up and be a voice (laughs) for the people who elected you. True. And our listeners will be able to tell us that because by the time they hear this, all those yeah, secrets like will be out. Now. It's going to be juicy. We'll see. We'll see. So anyway, uh, not a hot political tip, just a, a connection and, and a fervent wish that all of the dirty secrets that dirty politicians of any flavor. Absolutely. All of those secrets that they have hiding in their closets and in the bottoms of their briefcases and wherever else they're hiding their disgusting behavior, all of that comes spilling out and we pitch them all out on the street. Yeah, it's like I said about this movie. I don't like it when they're keeping the secrets in there. So just let it all out into the air. Yep. Air it all out. It's the only way. It's the only way. That and nuking it from space. Well, yeah, it's the only way to be sure. (laughs) Which we might have to do. But next week, we're going to watch a delightful movie, and it will be delightful for all of us. So delightful. Yay! Yay! See you then. Okay, bye, everybody. Don't forget to call your elected representatives. looks at him like Sylvester Stallone looks at the mouse, like like imagining him as Oh, a turkey leg. As a turkey leg walking around all the time. Sylvester like, Stallone does that? That's not Did what you I meant. Mean <laughs> Sylvester Sylvester the cat. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go back and redo that. <laughs> I might put that at the end. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> No. Are you sure? Yeah, that makes me sound so Sylvester dumb. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Yo, Tweety Bird. <laughs> <laughs>